that it was really such a harmful thing to go. In fact, he told that fellow that it was better to go to a chaperone dance. You know, and I think that's what he said to the city on the park. <laughs> <laughs> park side. Like you know, you know, there were some times when I, in a small town, I felt they were a little bit too nosy. <laughs> sure. Where, where did you and Grandpa meet? Well, the first time we saw each other it was sort of different because I was born in Altona and when I was very small we moved to Nebraska and this nice farm family came in to see the minister's new little baby and um, she, my mom almost died when I was born so she was still upstairs in the bedroom and after several weeks and the family came up the steps to see this little baby and so his mother kind of he was four years eight months and 16 days older than I so the mother kind of said wanted him to look at this baby in the bed or in the bed with my mom but he wasn't a bit interested so it took about a few years later we moved that we moved to Watauga, and it was graduation <clears throat> of the class in 1930, right after we'd moved there. <clears throat> so they had the baccalaureate, you know, baccalaureate at the Congregational Church. So my mom and I sat in the back row, and Dad had to have the invocation and the benediction, so he was up in front. So we sat back there, and this class came in, and there were 14 in the class, and this good-looking senior came walking down the aisle. <laughs> oh boy, he's really neat-looking. But there I, I was an eighth grader with my hair cut, you know, in bangs, and so he wouldn't have looked at me if I <laughs> So that's how I did reading that. But then we did go to the same church, and I have, later on we were in the same youth group, I guess. And sang in the junior choir, or choir, and so that's how it all started. But I was going with this other guy, and I finally I was going with another guy, and I sure liked this one, but I didn't know what to do, how to get rid of him. I thought if I get rid of the other guy, I could somehow get a date with this one, you know. But Went on quite a while, and then I got a job after I got out of business college, and so they gave me two tickets that Boss did for a Knox College play. <coughs> so I thought this is a good way to show him I'm interested. So I called and asked if he wanted to go with me to the play. Isn't that terrible way back then? <laughs> <laughs> and he said he would go, and that was the beginning of it. Our courtship, but it lasted three years because it was an on and off again thing. Because he, the other fella, he was going to kill himself and everything if I didn't marry him. And I, it went on quite a while where I didn't know how to get rid of him. <laughs> I didn't shoot him or anything. But <laughs> and he's on the bed underneath. Oh dear, this is getting worse. <laughs> so, where did you guys get married? And when? We got married. <coughs> December 27th, 1939, <coughs> at Faith Luther Church in Watauga. And uh, went to Florida for a honeymoon. And uh, let's see, the night we got married, <coughs> I was embarrassed about going to a hotel with this fellow. You know, it looked like it. So, but by the time they got the pictures taken, it took reception and things like it was really late at night so I wouldn't need to have worried because they had a revolving door and there was a drunk guy going around and around in the revolving door and nobody else was around so we got over that part of it okay. The Wasn't there some, uh, didn't you get a ticket or something for going through the stop sign because the icy roads? Wasn't yeah, that we did have a hundred dollars to go on our honeymoon and thought that would be adequate but it got along pretty well too. The motel was just five dollars, and um, didn't just live on love. We had 
got to eat good meal for Porter, and he had a pretty nice time down there. But we only had about six dollars left as we came home, or we going through part of Indiana, and we would have made it home okay, but it was real icy. So, and I told him he had me look to see if someone was coming in another highway there, and I said, no, you better not even try to stop because it was so icy. So he just crept through there, but a police car came up behind us and he wasn't <laughs> creeping. He was resting us and so it took five dollars and fifty cents for our ticket. So we came home with fifty cents. <laughs> so that's enough. <laughs> what, what's the Harry Truman story? Can you tell us? The Mrs. Harry Truman story? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I've heard this one. It's Have you heard it? Hmm? It, it's not really all that funny. He doesn't hurt. <coughs> That's a new story. He hasn't heard it. Um, okay. Um, we heard that Harry Truman was going to come through Galesburg. And we thought, well, we weren't going to vote for him, but we thought it the kids, or I thought especially, that the kids should see him in case he got to be president. And he was going to make a stop on the back end of the train. And so <clears throat> uh, Nancy was a baby, and <clears throat> so Wayne stayed home with her, but I took Dick and Jan and uh, went into Galesburg. I had to go in and take eggs, we raised chickens and take eggs to the <clears throat> place where you left them off. And, and um, so I did that, and it was a hot day in May, and oh, I had one kid on one side and one on the other. The train didn't stop where it was supposed to. It was, went on down the tracks, and I was just getting so worn out. And um, finally, we did get to <coughs> see, see him, and then I had to go over to the egg store, you know, that place, <coughs> and suddenly I remembered that. Wayne said I'd have to get some chicken feed because <coughs> they were out of feed. And I'd counted on using the egg money, you know, to buy things in town. And I was so disgusted. I remembered that I had to do that. And it was so, instead of getting a check for the eggs, I had to stand there and write out a check for the feed. So there I stood and wrote, signed my check. Mrs. Harry Truman. <laughs> I, <was just, laughs> I wasn't <coughs> thinking straight. And the man never forgot it. That I, every time afterwards when I come into the egg store, he'd, well, here comes Bess Truman in the door, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that is the Truman story. I think I have heard that story a long time ago. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Do you have any other funny stories or anything? Oh, Laura is the one that she, I guess she'll tell you. She said she's going to write a book someday about <coughs> the strange things that happened, but I don't know of any right now that I can think of anything. There's the one with, oh, oh, go ahead. about the egg, your accident with the eggs. All kinds of eggs in the car. Yeah, I guess that wasn't really it wasn't. for me. Is, that we had 90 dozen eggs in the car <clears throat> going into that same place, you know. With, and um, this lady, I guess she had taken her husband down to the railroad station to work and she still had her <clears throat> pajamas on and her house coat. She was hurrying to get back, by the way, to get the, or be with the kids and she came barreling through there and hit Grandpa and uh, the car went upside down with those 90 eggs. <clears throat> and we never didn't keep that car very long afterwards because <laughs> the windows were all eggs, you know, and everything <laughs> went down in the windows. <clears throat> we had it so many years it was time to trade anyway, but that was quite a mess. So. <laughs> Yucky. Hot summer. Oh, that smelled really good after a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and your mother had mumps when she was how old? We lived at Cameron and we had mumps. Oh, 
ea, știi? Iar cu ea, odată m-am sâncit și wouldn't look, she put a big towel or something over the mirror because she wouldn't look at herself in the mirror and she just, she just looked so awful and then Grandpa got the mumps too and we had just enrolled in adult education dance class, <coughs> ballroom dancing, so we, because those Lutherans wouldn't let me dance around them. I, I didn't know how to dance very well. And he didn't either, because his folks were extra strict too about dancing of all things. And so we had just started and we were really, really enjoying our dance class. And, and when he got them up, he had got them really bad. And he was a couple, three weeks or more, he just couldn't go. And that was the end of our learning how to dance. But we did go to square dance and we liked that. <laughs> that hmm. I guess that's all I dare talk because it sounds yeah, like it. <coughs> but probably just as well. <laughs> <coughs> I've been telling Dee this story of my life. <coughs> <I> just, <laughs> <laughs> we could tell a few things about Nancy, though, couldn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. You could start right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> It would be best while she's not here. Okay, go. No, she was, she never did anything really bad, but she mm -hmm. somehow <laughs> was the one, though, that embarrassed us sometimes because when she was a year and a half, she got away from us. We were really happy that. Sunday that it was our turn to stay home with her rather than go to church when she was a certain age, you know, she just couldn't sit still. But this Sunday we were both there with her and she got away from us and crawled up to the front of the, of the <coughs> church that you were in, in Watauga, on her tummy. You know, she, you know I can't do this, but she was looking, looking up at the minister. And he, that's it, yeah, <laughs> grinning at him. And of course, he lost it, the minister. You know, we couldn't pretend we didn't know her because of that little church. <laughs> so that was when we decided then after that we would just take turns and go for a while. So, mm, shame on me. <laughs> yeah. And there was a time she was, what, third or fourth grade? And put lipstick on. Oh yes, she and her friend went into the restroom, and when they came back, they had bright red lipstick on, and the teacher made them, of course, wash it off. But and she went to the same church, so she could tell my mom all yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they graduated from high school, they this couple couldn't come to the graduation party, but the on Sunday they stopped here with the gift for him and it was a uh, travel alarm or you know little alarm clock and, and Nancy came up to your junior high I guess what she came flying in and saw that and she says oh Dick just what you, just what you wanted your sixth alarm clock or <laughs> your sixth <laughs> clock just, just what you needed your oh. own <laughs> sounds like Stevie Oh, yeah. <laughs> About the time she almost fell off the roof, the barn. Oh, yes. It was the corn crib out there. Oh, okay. It was being re shingled. <clears throat> and she crawled up the ladder and was over where her dad couldn't reach her, I guess. He did find me, but it was really scary because she was kind of sliding to the edge of the roof, but he did manage to catch her, but I guess she really got a spanking in there. Right. Really, she's never forgotten that. <coughs> she's told us about that. <laughs> that she was a good little gal, mostly. <laughs> well, Jan. Oh. I, yeah, Jan, there you go. You know, she just grew up like <laughs> Topsy. She was the... <laughs> really, she, she, she did... One time she headed down the road with her little stick with a 
colored hand <laughs> camera. She was knapsack. She ran, was running away from home. Gonna be a hobo, huh? <laughs> she felt she wasn't getting enough attention, I guess. And she got down the road just a little ways, sat down and waited for us to come and get her, and we never did, so she came home. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been ten little minutes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, how did Pete get his uh, name, Pete? That's, that's oh. a fun story. Oh, well, his older brother, well, there was a, first there was a man in Watauga named Pete Toulson, and he was not a desirable character. <laughs> and so when Pete was, <clears throat> when Roger was sort of born, we, we would say, where did Roger go? We got Pete Toulson in the <laughs> Where did Roger go? Well, so his older brother thought, I don't know what he exactly thought, but <laughs> and then he, he said that I called him Lily. His middle name was Lee, and that once in a while I call him Lily, and so <laughs> he would just opt that by him calling him Pete. So that's how it got started. But <laughs> we fought it for a while, but you know, you finally okay. have to give in. <laughs> Except he didn't have the name Peter. I mean, Roger, you, where do you get Pete out of Roger? Yeah, I just wondered. <laughs> but now I was telling Dee that his daughter, Jennifer, they call her Jen in school. And it would be saying, Jan, you know, and I could tell he doesn't care for that, but he's getting, getting some of his own medicine. <laughs> This isn't really very interesting stuff. No, it How long have you lived in this house? You built this house, didn't you guys build 1955. It? So it's... 40, 44, 45 years? 45. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it sure, it shows it. The floodwaters, we built it on the wrong place. It's real low here. and. We were planning to have a recreation room that would be so nice with paneling and things, and the water came up how many feet was it? It was just way up, and before we hardly moved in, and so uh, we've never been able to, you know, have that. But we now we need wallpapering and all kinds of things. But anyway, we but we had to move here in March, and so then none of this the downstairs <coughs> was done. The upstairs was pretty well done. My was mom's just, there wasn't any carpet, there were just piles of wood and things. And my mom had the first birthday in this house and it had to be in the utility room. Yes, yeah. right. It's all about that. <laughs> Didn't we just tell <laughs> <laughs> well, Our neighbors came over to help celebrate Nancy's birthday and we had to sit out at the kitchen table out in the utility room and have our cake and ice cream out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I heard a story about somebody stepping on a pitchfork or something. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is that Pete or yeah, that was what Pete. happened there? <laughs> I don't know. He jumped down and it went through the bottom and out the side. So. I think your mother fainted in the bathroom when they were trying to get cleaned up. Mm -hmm. she? Medical technologist person that yeah. she was. <laughs> <laughs> It's all about the stoping chicken chores. <coughs> Can you tell that? <coughs> no. Dick and I had to do chicken chores and we had to um, go and gather the eggs, you know, from the plane. We had little baskets, but the hens you had to reach underneath them to get the eggs. And they peck at you sometimes. So we didn't like it very well. So <laughs> one of us, I don't know who. Oh, yeah, she knows. But. <laughs> I, am, I am stoping the chicken chores. Put, put one P. Yeah, so. we, had a real, we had a real ornery neighbor. He got really mad at us, something about the, in the measuring the grand, ground on our farm. The uh, us man that did that somehow didn't come to do it, and so he got pretty angry. So. Uh, this note said, his name was Charles Broccoli, and the note said, Dear Charles Broccoli, we are stoping our chicken chores. 
<laughs> so we wrote it to Charles, huh? Yeah. Good. Meaning that Dad, you know, we were only like Charles Broccoli. So kind of calling Roger P. Tilson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thought that might make a difference. So. <laughs> but you were awfully good kids most of the time. So what, Dick? Yeah. Any good stories? On Dick? Um, he, he was out, he went out and drove a tractor really young. He seemed to want to be outside and do things like that. So I really he didn't do anything. Pete really. and Mom were kind of the uh, yeah. characters of the family. <laughs> We thought we were real lucky. Some of our neighbors, some of the people we knew had to go to jail and get the kids stuff. We didn't have to do that. <laughs> so what's your best memory of being married, Grandpa? Getting into a big family. <laughs> I was Old. lonesome as a <laughs> Only child, I think. And um, mm -hmm. um, at first, your sister in laws wouldn't let you bring anything. But oh, yes. They didn't I think had she one could cook. terrible experience. I didn't know how to cook. <laughs> and the night before I was married, I started to cry. I told my mom I couldn't get married the next day. I didn't know how to cook. I hadn't thought about it before <laughs> that. You know, I was, I was a career girl making $13 a week. And I, didn't have any intention of marrying a farmer, and here I was marrying a farmer. But anyway, I did try, though. I, well, for a while they had me bring the relish tray, you know, to a <laughs> gathering like we had, you know, they, and uh, could buy rolls in a package then, too. And so I'd bring the rolls in a relish tray, and we had homemade majors in our family by once, two. Well, they all, every single one of them graduated from college except Grandpa and I. The others all had, you know, and so we were the oddballs and the whatever. But I worked real hard and thought I had a dinner lined up that would be just the thing and invited the relatives that day. And the night before, there was a terrible storm and the lights went out, so the refrigerator in the night started to melt, the mm. ice melted, and it ran into the salad and the dessert and ruined those two things. And um, then I couldn't prepare the roast that I wanted to because um, the stove, you know, we didn't have enough and the lights were still out. So Grandpa went and got the old kerosene stove that he, we used in the basement and washed clothes to heat the water brought that old kerosene stove up and there was some sausage that had thawed out. So we made sausage patties and <laughs> fried those on this old stove and and cooked some potatoes. And Anyway, when I was going to drain the water off the potatoes in the sink, I burned my hand. Oh no, the sink was stopped up in this kitchen we shared with this lady. And so I, there was a pail there, like a garbage pail, and I was going to dump the water in, and I burned my hand, and most of the potatoes went into the garbage. Well, that dinner was the worst dinner I had ever had, and I was about ready to pick up my, take, hang my apron on the back of the door and head down the road, but well, it was so nice about it. So I made it through. <laughs> Have any funny stories of us or our cousins? Of what? Us or our cousins? Um, oh. <laughs> let's see. The time I cut my pinky off. Oh, fun. Yes, yes. <laughs> On the bathroom door, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. I don't remember. You were the first uh, patient that Dr. Prentice had, and he's the one that he didn't wasn't careful enough from Grandpa almost died when he had his hip operated on. You were the first patient he had. 
Mm -hmm. Reminded me of that several times when we were in there. <laughs> Please put the figure back on me. Yeah, I don't have any feeling in my pinky anymore. <laughs> no, I do. Oh. Uh, that's wonderful. It's a little funny looking on the end. But. Oh, <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. But Stephen and Tom, you were always good kids when you came. You never did anything on the line. We always appreciated that you came to see us because Lane's brother and his wife, they didn't get to see their grandkids from Michigan. They just never came down because they said they didn't travel well and they didn't come. And here you guys came and one time your luggage blew off the top of the station wagon. I don't know what all happened, but we got here. We appreciate it because we got to see you a couple times a year, which was really good. So what advice can you give to young people that you've learned in your life? Something you mean? Just something about life or? About life? Or anything. I don't know why. When one of you gets married, I have advice that I will give you with them. Wedding car because that got on the. Where you get those pants? In the paper that I had all this advice for these newlyweds. So yeah. when you do that, I'll give you some good advice. So trial and error. I'm going to advice. Leave you. <laughs> but on life, I don't know, life in general. Oh, it's, it's really <laughs> sad what I'm talking about. I have to think about it. Yeah, I, mm, I think just do what you're doing because you're doing things right. I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, it's, there's some, I just can't believe when we see on, on TV that what the young people, they show when they get into gangs and in our, I don't know it. it I just said, it's okay.